I can't comprehend why you, anyone would ever buy a, a unique vehicle and want to restore it and then want to show it. What, what an amazingly stupid thing I can't possibly comprehend. Like, like, why would you write a letter that sort of comes off dismissive of this person's hard work, is what I'm saying. All right, now, I know many of you have been waiting for this next story. Of course, of course, I am talking about Mr. Sam Crack. So he buys this car at salvage and it looks like this this car is in pretty bad shape it's looks pretty much totaled um what do we know just in case you're not familiar what do we know about being totaled um when a car even though that car doesn't look terrible it would probably cost more to fix that car than the insurance company says the car is worth now we're looking at the car that sam has fixed this sam took probably many hours and a lot of time and fixed the car but restored it back to its original condition including the Domino's logo that you see on there and of course Domino's is a tra a trademark it's for a pizza company in these in the states um, actually they're international I'm pretty sure I've seen them in every country I've gone to which is only Europe and, and Mexico and Canada but um, I'm pretty sure Domino's is, is pretty much every place. So Sam takes this time to fix this car, but he's not just fixing the car. He's also restoring its original condition, including its artwork, which happens to be a trademarked logo, colors, etc. of Domino's Pizza. And then he allegedly gets a letter or something, some communication from either the PR firm or a lawyer or something telling him that he's not allowed to have this car, not allowed to use this car, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, do we have a copy of the letter? I don't know if he's actually revealed the letter. We do not. Um, I have re I reached out to him for a copy of the letter, but we haven't received it yet. What's, what's on the GoFundMe? Let's see. Uh, now the car is being threatened to be either taken from our ownership or be deconstructed since whomever allowed it to be taken into the possession of the insurance company made a mistake. Okay, so that's what they're saying, that they accidentally turned it over to the insurance company. The fact that this organization offered to dismantle the car tells me they're not interested in the car itself. He was restoring it. Okay. What, what, what we don't know then is what more he intends to do with the car. I did hear him in this very video say that he intended to deliver pizzas with the car. So I thought today maybe we should go over a, kind of the spectrum of what you can and sort of can't do with trademark and all that. Yes, if he removed the branding, that would probably be one thing. However, he is sort of a car purist, and it seems like he wants to restore the car as in for show. Now, let me pause this for a second and take you to the International Trademark Association's website. This is a fairly prominent organization in trademarks, and they have a fact sheet here on fair use of trademarks. They have a list here of what are fair uses of trademarks that we could go over. For example, photographer's use of Barbie was a nominative fair use because his work was criticism of Barbie. A nominative use is a use by name, for example. There are two major kinds of fair use that are recognized for trademark. Nominative is one where you refer to something by name, such as a printer produced by Casio being a Casio printer and a descriptive fair use, such as when Paul Simon describes Kodachrome film in a song. The point of trademarks is to designate the origin of a good or service, to connect a good or service with the company through its branding. This way, when you go to the store and you buy a yellow container of, uh, of Tide detergent, 
you can you can be sure or relatively sure that what's in the bottle was actually made and produced by the Tide company, that they are responsible for its contents, that you can rely on the quality to be quality that is, a, that is attached to Tide. It does not mean that Tide can't make a shitty product or whatever. It just means that you will always associate that branding with that company as it's as the source of the good that you're purchasing or the service that you're using. With Domino's trademark on this car, the rights sort of overlap. There's a bit of a Venn diagram of Sam's uses and Domino's rights. One key point in here was that Domino's alleges they made a mistake According to Sam, Domino's alleges that, that they made a mistake in allowing the insurance company to salvage the car. That's a, that's a possibility. I, oh, well, they sold the car. I don't know that there's any legal right to obtain the car back when you accidentally sell it and don't immediately attempt to undo the accidental sale. It wasn't, it had to be months later that this car was repaired and they finally got around to letting him know they didn't like this. I don't think they missed the car in the time being. So I don't think that comes into it really at all. What really comes into it is that it's a Domino's branded car. I don't think that the special nature of it being a pizza oven car or whatever really has anything to do with it either. I think again all rights of sale and title were extinguished when it was transferred to Sam. What really is happening, in my humble opinion, unless somebody can give me a better read on this, because I'm certainly not above being wrong about something from time to time, but my initial reaction, and after a little bit of research, it's that Domino's branding is still on the car, and Domino's doesn't know what he's going to do with the car. We think back to that trademark stuff being a source indicator. If it is indicating the source of goods, what's happening if Sam, who's not associated with Domino's and not delivering pizzas, is driving around in a car like that? Let's go through the whole spectrum together while, while just watching this video for distraction. If if Sam is restoring the car and it is going to sit in his garage and do nothing, no one is ever going to see it again beyond the restoration of the car and it sitting in his garage, is that a infringement of Domino's trademarks? Probably not. There's no way that anyone can misunderstand or confuse the source of Domino's goods and the source of this branding with Domino's and what we, and with what Sam's doing. How about if Sam goes to a car show and he takes the car to the car show and he shows the car and he says, look at what a great restoration job I did on this. And let's say that he takes the car to the car show by trailer. He doesn't actually drive the car on the road, just for this purity of the hypothetical. I still think he's he's in the clear. He might even do himself a favor by including the phrase, I am not affiliated with Domino's Pizza. This car is not affiliated with Domino's Pizza, or something like that. Um, he'd probably want to talk to a trademark lawyer about that. Now, what if he wants to drive this car around on the road? What if he just wants to drive this car around on the road? I'm starting to, to, to hit a gray area for me because someone could recognize this car and say, oh, look at that cool Domino's car. What's, you know, I wonder what Domino's is up to today. Or what about that jerk who just cut me off in the Domino's car? Like Domino's no longer has control of its branding because the car's on the road out in public driving around like normal. So I, the, they were starting to hit a gray area, but let, let me go a little further and I think it'll be clear where the line might be. So what if he wants to deliver pizza in the car? He said something in one of his videos about going to a school or charity or event or something and delivering pizza using it. Well, that's a cool idea. It's got a pizza oven in it. It's like the ideal car for it. But it's still got the Domino's branding on it. 
how are you going to convince everyone involved, including the people taking photos of the event, including people taking photos from the event from afar? How are you going to make sure they all know that none of this is associated with dominoes? Eh, you're not. That's going to be really hard. And then finally, let's go all, let's go full bore, full hyperbolic. What happens if you are literally delivering pizzas in the car for a competitor? Now you are definitely confusing the source of goods. Now I agree, a caveat or, or element to that last scenario is that you'd be delivering pizzas for Joe's Pizza in a Domino's car and... But, but the people who ordered the pizza knew they ordered from Joe's, and the people who saw the car aren't, like, ordering pizza from Domino's because they saw the car, or ordering pizza from Joe's because they saw the car. So you've still got arguments here. This is not a pure open and shut case. There's some huge gray area here. But what you don't have, and let me just start, let me just start this video again here so that we can just, we can see... What you don't have is Domino's having the right to like a, to get the car or something like that. At the most, Domino's can probably make some sort of agreement or reach some kind of, of middle ground via a judge, if necessary, that he will only use the car for certain things or in certain ways that he won't misuse its branding and that if he does misuse its branding they have the right to something or other or he might simply agree to remove the branding which might just be as simple as maybe removing the dominoes themselves he can probably even keep the colors and get away with it maybe dominoes has a uh, a trademark on those colors in that scenario as well. Either way, he can't, he cannot legally use the colors and logo and such and the car in connection with selling, distributing, making, anything to do with pizza, basically. That's, that's the limitations of trademark. It's the, it's an indicator of the source of goods. And so the moment that he starts to confuse consumers about the source of goods is where Domino's trademark rights really kick in and kick in pretty hard. And I would expect them to have a complaint, have some kind of claim in court, some valid claim in court, if the Venn diagram of Sam Crack's uses starts to overlap with with um, with Domino's trademark rights in protecting the source of their branding and their goods. So there is a claim here. Domino's is not wrong for being concerned. Uh, I'm, maybe they're a little wrong for coming at him this way. They probably should have explained all of this like I just explained to him and just said, look, we can't have you using our branding in connection with selling pizzas. So, you know, here we'll offer you some money for the, for the car. Thank you for your hard work. And frankly, why didn't they offer him a decent buck for the car? Like, like, it's a beautiful job that, that he did here, and they don't like the legal situation they're in. It's their legal situation that they're in. Just give them a couple more dollars for the car. Jeez. People are, are really stingy these days with some of these things, in my humble opinion. If he's not selling pizza, then it's not a copyright trademark issue. He bought the car. Copyright issues are extinguished with the first sale. So it's not a... It's, he doesn't have the right to copy the branding, but he does have the right to restore the car. A judge might have to help me further whether his act in restoring the branding to its original condition was also some kind of copyright infringement. I don't think that that's how that works. We've had that in landscape cases before or in architecture cases. You can repair architecture to its original artistic decorative, decorative form without infringing on the copyrights of the people who designed the house. So this should be the same as long as, once again, he doesn't adi go the additional steps of confusing consumers about what he's doing with the car and whether he's sponsored by Domino's or not, which could be really easy to do if he does the wrong thing with it. 
So hopefully that makes sense. I wanted to clarify a couple of things. The sure. the suggestion that he would go to a school for disabled children and deliver pizzas, that was only on the table with Domino's as an alternative to selling them the car. So he was like, I don't want to sell you the car for that price. You guys don't seem to be willing to go higher. I would like to maybe set something up like we can make good use of this. You know, let's let's bring some pizzas to some kids and, um, you know, that kind of thing. That was what that was. Okay. Um, that's that's really awesome and very charitable of him, and I I like this guy. You know, the more I found out about him, um, but he's yeah, he just he has to make sure that he understands trademark law and what he can't do using a Domino's car. He basically, in my humble opinion, and this is not legal advice, he probably can't drive it around the road. Like even though the car is working now. And I realize that that negates a bit of his investment. He probably can't drive it around with that branding on it because it doesn't belong. The branding does not belong to him because it would confuse consumers about, you know, who's driving the car and what they're doing with it. Could he, if he, if he wanted to drive the car someplace to like drive it to the show or whatever, just like get some of those vinyl thing, those peel off whatever's and just put some vinyl cover ups over it, some magnets or something, which I realize is not ideal. You have to make sure everything's freaking clean. So you don't scratch stuff and all. I get it, but he could cover it up so that he doesn't violate anything while he's driving it on the road. Yeah. But if he starts driving it on the road, he could start confusing things. And definitely if he delivers pizzas with it, which whether or not that scenario was as I said it, I meant what I, what I said about the, the judgment of that scenario. If he delivers pizzas with it, that should probably be the clearest violation of, of their trademark. It's not that he can't have a restored car. It's that he can't have that branding and branding is something that's active. It's not that once it's on the car, it doesn't matter anymore. No, branding is active. If you start to use it in commerce now, it, it'll be confusing to consumers, and that is exactly what trademark's for. So, yes, a judge will think this case has some kind of merit, um, depending upon what the sides say. If Sam says, I've never done and never will do any of those things that Domino's is, is worried about, then the judge might say, then there's no case here. Domino's is just worried that you're going to do something. Maybe you want to make an agreement with Domino's. And hey, Domino's, maybe you want to stop being so stubborn because the two of you both have rights here. We probably should work it out. Actually, when I spent some time in divorce court, Judges used to do this, and I think this is a great scenario for it. I've had judges take the attorneys and say, you are not leaving this courthouse until you work this out. Go into that conference room and agree to something. And I've literally had judges say that. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know how much the judge's power actually extended to enforcing that statement, but you, I didn't want to find out. So we <laughs> went into the conference room and we worked it out. <laughs> Uh, there was one other thing. Um, one other possible plot twist with this case um, is that he mentioned that the email came from a Gmail address and not from some kind of official Domino's address. Now, I mean, okay. it's possible. that's possible. Yeah, it's possible that somebody at Domino's is using a, a Gmail address, which, you know, that's fine. Um, or a legal representative. Lots of attorneys still use Gmail addresses. I don't recommend it, but... Even I, for example, I have three email addresses we use in connection with the channel, and one of them is just a regular old Gmail address. The other two are run by Gmail. They're just private domains. Yeah. So yeah, I could see someone sending it from a Gmail account, but you're absolutely right. When you send a demand letter and it just says, hey, Joe, it's Bob, please take the thing down. You know, it doesn't sound like as authoritative as, you know, uh, do we cheat him and how law firm, you know, I represent so-and-so this letter is a, consider this letter, a formal demand letter for your to see to cease and desist. Yada, yada. It sounds so much more powerful when you do it that way. However, in this day and age when people have the internet and we're all kind of a, a little bit more educated on some things, at least we all know that this doesn't have to be done this way. Right. And so it just comes off as, as stubborn and strong arming and frustrated like, I can't comprehend why you, anyone would ever buy a, a unique vehicle and want to restore it and then want to show it. What, what an amazingly stupid thing I can't possibly comprehend. Like, like, why would you write a letter that sort of comes off dismissive of this person's hard work, is what I'm saying. The point that I was trying to possibly make is that there's been no public 
uh, statement from Domino's on this. There's been nothing from Domino's, almost nothing from Sam, other than the video and the GoFundMe. It's possible that this isn't even Domino's sending him this letter. It is possible that it's a scam. Somebody somebody saw the uh, video and said, "Let's let's let's prank somebody." It's possible. Um, I don't. Yeah, it's not I don't incredibly know. likely though. I mean, this is a pretty big scam, if, you know. The, the so it's got four hundred and six thousand views listed here on on YouTube right now. I'm assuming someone from Domino's has seen this, and if they weren't the ones behind it, they would be dealing with it. Right. Also, he has another video that says he bought another Domino's car. Yeah, but that one doesn't have the branding on it. Okay. So now, just to go to that scenario, if he buys another Domino's car and it doesn't have the branding on it, and he goes and puts the branding on it, that's a little bit different of a scenario, too. Right. You may remember, trademarks can be diluted if you say... Kleenex too often for tissues, then Kleenex becomes generic. If you say Xerox too often for copies, then you get Xerox becomes generic. So companies have to protect their trademarks, and they also have to protect the way other companies use them. If they don't enforce their trademark rights and properly license them, they can lose them as well. Called naked licensing, trademark dilution, and genericide are those three topics for anyone interested. In regards to, if their main argument is about him making videos, right? Um, him making videos showing the car with the Domino's logo on it, okay? He, he made a good point in his video where he showed that another person has a video where he eats Domino's pizza and is showing the trademark, um, but is not associating himself with Domino's. He's only eating pizza. Are those two things equivalent? in terms of enforcing trademark and if they enforce the trademark on his video do they also have to enforce the trademark usage in the other person's video too the standard is whether it is confusingly similar to a jury basically so it's not as black and white of a question as some you'll have to put your scenario into your head as like what do what would like my average reasonable citizen who would pass into a jury pool who would like actually get picked for a jury what would they think of my scenario is the scenario where where the domino's car is there but sam is just eating pizza out of a unbranded pizza box that's really close like that's that's still pizza associated with branding for domino's so you have to be, you'll probably have to put a disclaimer on that. Some of this stuff will probably have to come with a big disclaimer, you know, not, I'm not affiliated with Domino's Pizza or something like that. When he's doing anything that, that could come anywhere close to infringing. Thank you very much to all of my supporters. You support on Twitch now. You support on Patreon. Um, I've had some of you send me donations directly through PayPal. That's awesome. You guys are amazing in what you'll do to keep this channel going. The adpocalypse does continue to hit us. I can tell you that the videos get remonetized faster, but the effects of getting demonetized in the first place still do hit us. So it's not like we're making a million dollars on top of the Patreon donations. Right now it's working out to be about a thousand dollars of YouTube income a month. And so that's that's a good number, but that's not what it used to be. We're actually really down on the income, even though subscriber numbers and view numbers are either up or at least holding. So it's it's a little weird that that the channel is growing but the youtube revenue is not on a legal education breaking news channel it's really weird that we kept keep getting demonetized like this so no we're not going anywhere we're going to put up with it and the reason we can put up with it and weather the storm is because of your donations on patreon and twitch and uh really every other way that you support us by sharing, by commenting, by participating, by just being a great viewer is really all that we need from you to keep going here. So thank you very much to those of you who have done the, uh, have, have done more and have sponsored by paying your actual hard earned dollars. My $50 plus supporters for the month of March are DJ Gilcrease, John Steele, Gavin Bernard, The Godslain, Evie Andy, Kyle Mudrock, John H. Anderson, Vera Mantain, and Sean McNamara. 
When I post this VOD, I will have the $5 plus supporters scrolling on the screen. You're also on the LED panel behind me, which I update on the first of every month with all of the supporters who subscribed or, or supported uh, during the previous month. And that's how Patreon charges you too. So if you start supporting in March, you'll, you'll actually be charged on April 1st and you'll receive your recognition in April. Just so everyone's clear, we really haven't had any, any, any complaints or anything. Just wanted people to know how that timing works. So thank you very much. I do see that's that we are almost up to $2,000 a month in Patreon donations, which is absolutely wonderful. That is exactly the kind of budget that I need to make this to really put more and more time, effort, and money, and people into this. There will be more people involved in this channel as as that budget grows. I am, of course, Leonard French, your favorite copyright attorney. And I'll see you in the next video, of course.